Hello, 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 hello. To be in line with the will of God, you have to read, you have to study, you have to know and believe the word of God. Now, if you don't believe that God has preserved his word, you're going to be in trouble because out there in the so-called Christian bookshops, there are literally hundreds of different Bible versions. Now, I understand the Bible in different languages because not everybody speaks English. So I'm Italian by birth, so there is an Italian version as well as somebody is Filipino, another one is Indian, another one is, you know, whatever are the language out there. There are many, many languages. But the text must be the preserved word. Now, if God has not been able to preserve his word, what kind of God is that? Just think, you know, I mean, I want to provoke you to think. I believe personally that the Lord, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the one who created the heaven and the earth, whose power is beyond our imagination or capacity even to conceive, of course, he preserved this world. He's even wrote it. Let's see. Let's see. Preserve. Huh? Psalm 12. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What? The word of God. This is Psalm 12. And it's written, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. You see? Preserve them, the words of the Lord, from this generation forever. Okay? So, if you don't believe that God has been able to preserve His word, I'm asking you with all sincerity, come on, tell me, which kind of God do you believe? If He is not the Almighty God, the Creator of the heaven and the earth, who spoke the world into existence, if you don't believe that he preserved this word, then you're in trouble. Where are you going to find the word of God? And this is the problem with religion. You enter a building that they call church, a building. A place where people gather together. Huh? And the pastor says, let's open the Bible. And you hear all this flipping around the pages. And you see a person's got a new international version. Another one has got the New King James Bible. Another one has got the ESV, the English Standard Version. Another one has got the NASB. Another one has got the Mess Edge. How in the world? You are not gonna, you're not going to be able to, to preach, teach anything because the words are changed. So, all this to say, I personally believe that God has preserved this word. And that's why I believe that this word is the King James Bible. In this case, I got the program here that another brother uh, prepared. is the King James Pure Bible Search. But you see, I'll show you here. I got on my computer the Holy Bible. 1611 King James Version. Edition 1769. It says, translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations, diligently compare and revise. So what happens that in 1769, they corrected more than anything else the way the, the words, the vowels eh, were, you know, were written. Because in 1611, the U 
like a, look like a V and the F the S like an F and so it's been uh, revised been corrected from the term that, the way it's written we call it orthography orthography I didn't want to use this word it looks too the way it's written but otherwise this is the preserved word and you know there are no errors because I tell you something if if there is an error God is not real do you understand because God is perfect let's go together this Psalm Psalm 18 what does it say hmm? The Lord is amazing, you know. As for God, His way is perfect. Did you, did you read this? As for God, His way is perfect. My friend, your way is not perfect. My way is not perfect. We are sinners. Romans 3, 23 says, All have sinned and come short to the glory of God. But we're talking about God. God cannot sin. If you hate God, it's because you're a sinner. But God cannot sin. In fact, God presents himself not only as the Savior, the, the Creator, but also as the Savior of mankind. The point of the matter is, will you believe it? As for God, his way is perfect. Now listen to this. The word of the Lord is tried. Hmm? the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth you see, you see this kind of consistency this is a psalm written 700 years ago Sorry, I really apologize. 700 years before the coming of Christ. Sorry, but that was a big mistake. It's because I'm thinking, well, while, while I'm talking, so many thoughts crowd my mind that sometimes my words come out wrong. But he is a buckler to all the, those that trust him, in him. For who is God, save the Lord? Now, this is amazing because L O R D capital letter in the Old Testament of King James Bible he is the name of the Father for the God in the Old Testament the people say Jehovah Yahweh in reality cannot be even pronounced it's, it's, for, it's called the tetragrammon tetragrammon four letters four consonants there are no vowels so really the King James translated like Lord now look here. For who is God save the Lord? Or who, who is the rock save our God? God, Lord, God. Three. What is that? I tell you what is that. The God. Head. Let's go there. God head. Hmm? For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. So don't even try to depict with a painting or a picture God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. It's just, it's just wrong. <laughs> In Romans. 120 the apostle paul tells us for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse who those who don't believe you know these people say i don't believe that god exists it's one thing to say i don't put my trust in god okay it's one thing to even deny his existence. In that case, there is a psalm that defines you straight away. What is it? What is going on? All right. 
Psalm 14, verse 1. Who look? Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool is sad, sad in his heart. There is no God. So God says that uh, if you said in your heart there is no God, you're just declaring that you are a fool. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that does good. And just in case you miss that, the Holy Ghost makes sure that you get this. Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. It's believable. It's just an expression, you know, oh, you know, wow, you know, a marvel. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that does good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that does good, no, no one. That's why people don't like this book, you know, because it tells you the truth. Between us, we always flattering, complimenting, oh, you're such a special person. You're so wonderful. But really, we're not. That's why Christ came to save sinners. If we were so wonderful, so perfect, so beautiful, why in the world Jesus came to save us? If we could save ourselves with our religion, works, good works, a crisis died, died in vain. And that God is just wasting his time and hours. But you see what he says, have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? <laughs> it looks like they have no knowledge. Going back to their Godhead, for in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead body. In Christ dwells the fullness, oh, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You know, there are some people that go around and say Jesus was not God. Other people say Jesus was not man. You can't deny the God, the, the God side, you know, the, the fact that Christ was God. Amen. Because in that case, you haven't got a savior. Because Christ could die for our sin, being a man, and his death on that cross of Calvary was enough to pay for our sins because he was God at the same time. Now, God doesn't die, that's impossible. So, Christ the man, he died. But his death for, was sufficient eh, for our to pay for our sins, to satisfy the request of justice and righteousness. That's why you got to understand that what I was saying before, the reason why, it, where is it going? <laughs> I lost the game. The reason why in Psalm, in Psalm 12, Psalm 12, remember, I was there, wasn't I? Lord, 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 thou shalt keep the, them, O Lord. <laughs> thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Hmm? God. You need God. You may think you don't, but you do. You do. Dispensation. All started because I want to talk about dispensation. Yeah. Because some people say, Oh, I cannot believe you, because you are a dispensationalist. Hmm. Well, what about I found this word dispensation in this Bible? The point is, if you're using other perversions, you will not find the word dispensation, because Satan hates the fact that you can come to know the truth, because it's the truth that you need. Not lies. But, my dear friends, the word dispensation is present four times in the King James Bible, you see? In the letters of Paul, you see? Corinthians, Ephesians, Ephesians, Colossians. These letters are Paul. Why? Because 
To Paul, not Peter, James, and John. To Paul has been given the revelation of the mystery. To Paul has been given the dispensation of the grace of God and the gospel of the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 9.17 Dispensation Ephesians 1.10 Dispensation Ephesians 3.2 If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to your word Many people haven't heard Nobody told them that also if they use a corrupt version if they don't use this Bible they will never come to understand that we are in a dispensation that which is defined by God in his word the dispensation of the grace of God which actually should make you very happy unless you really so anti-God that you really want nothing to do with, the, with him and then okay okay you know when you go to hell you have all the time in the world you got eternity to be on your own in total sufferings and pain and torment, don't think it's going to be a nice trip. For eternity, after one billion years of earth time, not even a second of eternity. But anyway, you should be happy <clears throat> that we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. Because it means that you, that I, that we, that anyone, any man or woman on this earth can be saved forgiven accepted in the below how by grace through faith by believing the glorious gospel of grace the glorious gospel of christ you must say to me what well, how do i know and of course that you ask me and of course i'm happy to give an answer look go in the book of acts 20 24 and you read yeah, the Apostle Paul wrote, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So now, in this dispensation of grace, the gospel which is active, which is in operation, is the gospel of the grace of God. Not the gospel of the kingdom. Yes, how can you prove this? Okay, look. Let's go Mark 16, 16. According to what Christ says, in the gospel of, in the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, look at what's going to happen here. Mark 16, 15 and onwards. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, the gospel to every creature. He that believes, okay, and is baptized shall be saved. So you know, only need to believe that Christ is the Messiah, King of Israel. But you need to be baptized in water to be part of the little flock of Israel, to be part of the, the nation of Israel. But he that believes not shall be damned. So damnation is present also here. And these signs shall follow them that believe. The signs follow. Okay. In my name shall they cast out devils. Not demons. You know, people say demons. A demon can be good, but these are devils. The evils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God, where he's sitting now, okay? And they went forth, who? Who they? Peter, James, John the Twelve, and preached everywhere. Everywhere where? In Judea. In Samaria. Eh? The Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. And that's how it closed. Now, this is not happening nowadays. There is a lot of pretending that's happening but it's not happening if this was happening hospitals would go broke and so doctors because hey with all the believers that say they are they got this power they just will go around preach preach and, and pray and pray and pray all the sick will be healed no one oh 
Because Jesus healed them all when he was in his earthly ministry in Israel. So what's happening now? Does Jesus hate our guts? He doesn't want to heal us? No, we don't belong to Israel. Where well, he's got no covenants with us, so we have no covenant with him. We don't belong to that nation, even if we're born there. I'm talking to Israel at the time of Christ. You're not part of the little flock of Israel. You haven't got this power. If this was the gospel of the kingdom now, you should see people healed and delivered from all the oppressions of the devil. It's not happening. Unless you live in Disneyland, La La Land, or you believe all the lies and deception that are propagated even from the TV evangelists. I speak knowing this because erroneously I was wrong. I was Pentecostal, so I know. I prayed for so many people, believing with all my heart and with so much love because faith works through love for them to be healed, and they didn't get healed. Even my father. He had cancer, and I said, Dad, don't worry. The Lord is going to heal him, heal you. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. Not only me, pastors pray, friends pray, anoint with oil. My father died of cancer. Not only that, speaking with new tongues is not this gibberish that we used to, undalaban, dalaban. They are really tongues. Because this is going to happen in the future when Israel is going to be restored and this Messianic Jews filled with the power of the Holy Ghost like a Pentecost, they will need to preach the gospel to every nation. So they will be able to speak any language without going to language school. The Holy Spirit will empower them and they will have this power. And because in that period, during the period in which the, the Antichrist will be ruling with a false prophet, they will be persecuted, they will need supernatural intervention of God to provide for them like he used to provide for them during the time of Exodus with Moses. And with Christ who multiplied the fish and the bread and gave them water and so forth. You know what I mean? In the dispensation of the grace of God is written very clearly, my grace is sufficient to thee. So we are now in the dispensation of the grace of God. The gospel that we preach is the gospel of the grace of God, which practically says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which also received out the Christ, died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. So, number one. Let's see. Who died for our sins? Christ died for our sins. Then he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Is that clear? That's why in Romans 4 25 it's written that he was delivered for our offenses, sins, transgression, and was raised again for our justification. You believe this glorious gospel? The Lord saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise until the, the redemption of the perishable possession, which will be until you receive a new body, glorified body in heavenly places. And you are already saved and seated with Christ in heavenly places. This is the only gospel that saves you. When you seek, you still pray that the Lord would help you to go through or to get better, whatever it is. But you cannot claim promises that were made to another nation in another dispensation. You've got to move. You've got to walk by faith, not by sight, in what God has written. When he says, my grace is sufficient unto thee. Let's see. My grace. Hmm? Look here. Paul was sick. He had some problem with the eyes. I don't know exactly what it is. 
It was a messenger, look, it's written here. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Not, not very nice, a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. This is the apostle of the Gentiles. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought, which means old English, I prayed intensely the Lord thrice, which means three times, that he might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul does something that we don't do. He says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Come on. The reality is we are under grace. God has given us Abundance of grace. God has given us all sufficient grace. God has given us the free gift of eternal life. By the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. We heard this gospel, the word of truth. We have believed. God saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise until the redemption of the perishable possession. Okay, I got to find this scripture for you because you don't need to believe me. You need to go and check on this book. You see what it says in Ephesians 1, 12, 13, 14. That we should be to the praise of his glory. <laughs> Not the glory of the local pastor, the local church, the assembly, the, the denomination, the Pope in Rome. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted. Who? The Ephesians. After you heard the word of truth. Wow. The gospel of your salvation. In whom... Also, after you believe, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So, that's what it does. Because God knows we can't save ourselves, He saves us. Because no, God knows if we won't be able to keep ourselves saved, because we still fail, we still come short in one way or another, we still can sin with a thought, with a word, with an action. God says, I seal you with the Holy Spirit of promise until the redemption of the perishable possession. And to the praise of his glory. That's what it is. The glory, all the glory goes to the Lord. Goes to the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Salvation is of the Lord. It was of the Lord in the Old Testament. It is of the Lord in the New Testament. It is of the Lord in the revelation of the mystery, the letters of Paul. God is the Savior, Redeemer. And is the head of the body. The body of Christ is the new creature. Not born again, new creature created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God is preparing in advance that we should walk in them. I stop here. I stop here because there's a lot of stuff. All I want to say to you, please, make sure, make sure that you say the will of God, it will have All men to count to salvation. Let's see if I find it here. Ah, look here. This is the will of God in this dispensation of grace. For this is good and acceptable in, in the sight of God our Savior. What? Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and apostle, I speak the truth in Christ's light, not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. My dear friend, in the Lord we have salvation, we have abundance of grace. Not just to make us win the lotto or never, never be seen uh, sick or, you know, have a super victory. You don't. You still have a lot of problem in this flesh of yours and mine. <laughs> but you have salvation as a free gift. 
because Christ gave himself to deliver us from this present evil world. And guess what? You might think, ha, 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 I don't believe this dude. It should be me. Fine. I encourage you to believe. The gospel of grace of God is free. I'm not going to ask you for money. No even offerings. I don't want anything. God forbid. I just want you to come to the knowledge that Christ commends his love towards us and while we would yet sin as Christ died for us. That's how God commends his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and godly sinners. Enemies of God. The gift of eternal life is there for you. Because you see, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God as Savior. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all, not for few. For all to be testified in due time. And there you got the apostle, priest, your teacher, your Gentile, Paul. We follow Paul to follow Christ, not because we love and worship Paul. Paul is just a man. And he was a sinner himself. He was persecuting, he was killing, he was murdering. We follow Paul to follow Christ because Christ now has sent to us Paul with the gospel of the grace of God. This glorious message for the salvation, eternal salvation of our soul. And we receive a also glorified body. And our spirit is already cut off from sin. We already belong to the Lord for eternity. My friend, I want to encourage you to believe. Believe the gospel of grace of God. Believe that Christ died for your sins. According to the scripture. That he was buried. And he rose again the third day. For your justification. I bid you grace and peace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.